Hey there, I thought I would make a quick video talking about my new hearing aids. You can see them right here. Now, um, I should point out that these little cups here were just an experiment, but I thought they would be um, more eye-catching <laughs> for the thumbnail image to have these on there. Now, they do work. I, sh I, like, I should say that they do work. They're little horns. That's what they are, and I 3D printed them so that they fit on the microphones, like so, and channel more of the sound into the microphone. Okay, it's only working at the very higher frequencies, but it certainly seems to help. And also, uh, these microphones are directional, which means that they're, they'll pick up more sound from the front, the direction they're pointing, than behind and the reason why that is is that there are small holes in the back here so sound there's kind of a cancellation pattern that happens around these microphones and this little cup that i made here um, reduces that a little bit so you get a little bit more output when these things are on so you get a little bit a tiny bit of horn gain and you're reducing a little bit of that cancellation. And now I should also point out that these microphones that I have here may not be the final ones. These are the best that I have. And when I say best, the ones that work the best, not the best as in money. I tried lots of different microphones, including the one I'm speaking into right now. And of them all, these ones, which I bought around, I don't know, 10 years ago, for $2 a capsule. And I, I think they're only about double that now, $4 a capsule, um, work the best. So a little bit of a backstory. You know, I talked about in a previous video a few months ago about the problems I have with my hearing aids, getting those set properly. And that's what motivated me to do this, okay? Because while I was getting this done, it was bouncing around inside my head, even though I wasn't that much into it at the time. It was bouncing around that I can do this stuff. I can build something that will do what this thing is supposed to do. So when I was last at the audiologist, I ordered these. I ordered these receivers. That's the wire and the little tiny speaker on the end. Okay. A pair of those, a left and a right. They were $220, so they weren't giving those away either. But certainly a lot cheaper than the four or five thousand dollars that a whole like pair of these costs with the hearing aid itself. I bought those with the idea that maybe I could rig something up like this, which is attached to wires, you can see, and the wires go into this box that I also 3D printed, um, kind of a neat little package, not very big, nice and uh, slim. And uh, uh, inside the box is the amplifier. And really what it is, is an active amplifier in that it only, well, it, it, it has a response curve, one for each ear. I started off with, with both ears being equal and I adjusted my right ear slightly to change the response because my right ear is actually worse than my left ear. So I, I boosted the high frequency part of the range in my right ear more than the left ear. And that equaled, like that evened them out. The circuit itself is deceptively simple, although it took me like four different redesigns to arrive at it. Um, I started off a lot more simple with, um, especially on the lower end of the um, response curve, I started with a, a shallower filter, meaning that more low frequency content was going to the receivers, the speakers. However, these will not handle low frequency content. And what I really should have done was measured, try to devise a way to measure what this thing is doing exactly. 
to see what the response this has before I even started with any of this. I didn't do that and I still haven't done it because I'm, I'm terrified of destroying this. Okay. When, whenever you're trying to do something that involves taking the wire out, which I can do, and then plugging other wires in, then you run the risk of destroying $3,000. That's what these cost when I bought them in 2015, $3,000 worth of hearing aids. So I didn't measure it. That's what I should have done. So I figured it couldn't be that hard. I know what my hearing is, is like. I've got my audiogram. It show I know exactly like what it's down, but you can't just do that, recreate that in here. There are other problems. First of all, the biggest problem is that this is a speaker and like every other speaker, it has a, a, a resonance peak and you really don't want to be producing sound in that resonance peak because it peaks up. You want to be able to notch it out. And I'm sure that that is exactly what this thing does. It has a, a nice deep notch at the resonance peak of this speaker because they know what the resonance peak is, except they didn't tell me. I couldn't find out what it was. And I suppose I could once again, try to rig something up to try to measure this in the same way you'd measure the FS of a speaker. But once again, I was, you know, paranoid of destroying anything. So I figured I was running enough risk here with $200 worth of these little tiny things here by plugging them into a homemade amplifier. So yeah, you want to like, Ideally, you want to start by measuring this and also knowing what the FS of this is, the resonant frequency of this speaker. And that way you could properly 100% design a thing. What I chose to do instead with this was take a guess that the FS or the resonance peak of this is around 500 because testing with previous versions of this I played a tone and I could hear a definite increase at around 500. So what I did was I limited how far down this goes, the response curve, in other words. So I started at around 700 Hertz and up, figuring that I would get back most of the stuff that I'm missing. And to be honest, I think I hit the nail right on the head. It doesn't work as well as this because this can go down a bit deeper. Okay. This is going probably down to around, I don't know, a couple of hundred Hertz. All right. So it's covering the full, um, you know, definitely female vocal range and, and most of the male vocal range as well down low enough. And it's also, able to gain more and work with the speaker more um, like it, it it's tailored to work with this speaker whereas this thing I'm just guessing and I'm giving it straight gain okay so at the end of the day after the four or five different versions <laughs> that I tried these ones are working excellent. I can put these in. The only thing I notice is that the wires are hanging down. You have to be careful of those, but it doesn't sound like, like there's no noise that comes from this. There's no buzzing, no humming, no anything. When I put these in, all I can do, all that happens is I start hearing those higher frequencies a lot better. Back to what seems like normal for me. Now, like I said, it's not as good as this, but it's very close. It's certainly making, okay, it's certainly working better than both of these together because <laughs> that's the other thing about this. The one for my right ear is nearly perfect. The one for my left ear is still not there. So they're on balance. And what I'm left with when I'm wearing these is a stuffed up feeling in this ear because it's not, uh, performing correctly. Okay. With these in, they're perfectly balanced. 
I'm getting perfect dead center response from both of these. And I made it so that I can uh, finally adjust this. I've got a, a trim pot on both channels, one on each channel, to adjust the output volume. Okay, so I can adjust it up and down. Now the response curve, you can see some of that on the screen back here if it's not blown out, is very steep at the bottom. I've got a sixth order high pass filter to start and that really makes a, a strong slope to cut off the response at the bottom end so I don't have any base going to these. And then the high pass is a more gentle first order, not first order, second order roll off that cuts off the really high end stuff because like I tried it at one point without a high pass, uh, low pass filter and it was performing the way that they were setting up these ones before in that it was screeching in my ear. So I added the, I added back in because I started with it to begin with. I added back in the low pass filter to cut off the higher frequency stuff. And it's stuff that I can do without. I'm listening to music and that's okay. I should say that that's what I made this for. I only made this to use in my listening room. I'm not going to be outside wearing this. This thing can run on batteries, two nine volt batteries, but instead of doing that, I made a power supply that's very heavily filtered that plugs in. So I don't have any batteries to change. I come down here in the evening. I plug this thing in. These are working. I put them in my ears and I, you know, enjoy my evening without, you know, these things, the problems I'm having with these. Before I go, I should mention something else that's important because I did show the circuit diagram. First is that it's heavily tailored to my hearing. Okay, the response, well, the layout that you saw on the screen is the response that I'm showing. The other thing is that there's no limiter in this circuit in that these will, well, this will amplify loud sounds just as well as low sounds to the point where it will overload these even. Okay. So these are not for out wearing in the world. I'm wearing these in my listening room where I listen to everything at the same volume and there aren't any loud sounds to worry about other than the occasional cough. If I were to cough, uh, feel a cough coming on or a sneeze, I should pull these out. <laughs> Otherwise I'll get a hammering in my ears from it. But uh, yeah, if you're thinking about making this, then that would be my word of caution there. Um, first of all, you need to know what you're doing because you would need to adjust it to your own hearing. And second of all, you need to be aware that there isn't any limiter in here. Whereas these things do have a limiter. Okay, these will not deafen you. These potentially could if you were to leave them in and, you know, had very loud sounds.